Greetings. My name is C.J. Levick, and I am the author and founder of Rock Island Books. I trust you will be blessed as you view this video, and I would like to invite you to assist Rock Island Books in our urgent desire to proclaim the very soon coming of our Lord and the very soon coming of the 70th week of Daniel. The world is about to change in ways we can hardly imagine, and when it does... I am convinced that almost all Christian YouTube videos and Christian media will be censored or removed from the Internet. When we are gone, what will the world think? Will they believe the lies that will be told about our disappearance? Please consider assisting us in getting this message into the places that cannot be canceled by going to Rock Island Books and purchasing one of our 2024 Prophetic Prophecy series, presented on DVDs that cannot be canceled in order that those that remain will have a testimony that might just be the very thing that leads them to the Lord, who is now and always the only hope for lost and dying people and the lost and dying world that is literally passing away. Let me introduce you to the mystery of the fourth day. Sometimes things we think are hardly worth spending any time considering hold mysteries, that are only revealed to those that believe anything connected with God's Word, anything God said or did, no matter how trivial it may seem to everyone else, has meaning. I cannot help but notice that the Lord notoriously hides some of His most amazing revelations in the most unlikely and humble places. There is much discussion and argumentation about when Jesus was crucified. How many times have I heard Christians dismiss the question as a meaningless discussion that has no point? In other words, it's a hobby horse. It has nothing to do with salvation or how I live my personal life as a Christian. In other words, who cares? If this is your attitude, I invite you to consider this question from another vantage point, another point of view, asking the question, does God think the day His Son died for the sins of the world, a day so trivial that all that mattered was that it happened, with no thought given or importance attached to when it happened? In other words, have you ever considered that there are amazing reasons connected with the question, when it happened? Are there big gaps in our understanding of this topic that the Lord wants to bridge with insight and glorious vision he is just waiting to reveal to us. Could it be that the little detail we consider so insignificant, so unimportant, that it's not worth our time considering is actually a huge part of God's big picture with vistas that take you to the brink of eternity? Are we missing something when we dismiss the question of when did the prophecy revealed in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah actually happen? When did the Lamb of God accomplish the appointed time set by God the Father, the most important event to ever happen on the earth? If you think it doesn't matter to God, I think you need to reconsider and join me as we do a deep dive into the Scriptures looking at this from a vantage point that magnifies and exalts the God of Heaven who does nothing by happenstance and has huge eternal reasons for even the smallest detail of His plan to redeem man. Is the question of when Messiah died on a wooden cross a small detail? Of course not. Let's explore the day God, the Son, accomplished the appointed sacrificial event that was sufficient to the salvation of all mankind. Let's approach this topic with reverence and thoughtful contemplation, the contemplation and thoughtfulness it deserves. I believe, no, I am convinced that getting this right is gloriously rewarding. I believe that widening the screen on this topic in order to see the amazing full picture will be rewarded with a full measure of joy and astonishment that has nothing to do with head knowledge and everything to do with your relationship with the Lord. Ushering in a fuller and richer relationship with Yeshua who came to this earth to accomplish our salvation and did it for reasons we need to acknowledge at the appointed time. So can we know when that time is? Absolutely. 
Now, some approach this question lifted up with pride, announcing that they are the ones that got it right, and inflated with pride, they treat this truth like it is a spiritual cudgel to beat people over the head with, as their ego enlarges with every conquest they make based on the argumentation and debate. Please be assured that this is not the purpose of my teaching, teaching the Wednesday crucifixion of Yeshua. My attitude is not that I know something you don't, something you don't know, and I derive some perverse satisfaction out of making a convert to the Wednesday crucifixion date, even though it really doesn't do anything to increase your faith or magnify your love for the Lord. No, no, no. My purpose is declaring this truth, and it's motivated by the simple fact that I know that once you get it, I mean really understand it and see it clearly, your faith in God, in the light of His revealed plans for you, will magnify your faith. It will increase your joy while igniting the blessed hope that is the birthright of everyone who is in Christ. The first clue that some amazing insight into God's Word is just waiting for a child of God to discover it is the knowledge that whenever something big is being hidden in plain sight, it is usually because the enemy of our soul, Satan, goes to extraordinary lengths to create confusion or to persuade you that the right answer is always to bow to church tradition, no matter how untethered that tradition is from the scriptures. Or perhaps he will convince you that deeper study will only lead to division and confusion. Satan's been very successful with this strategy as literally almost 95% of all Christians simply go along with the 33 AD crucifixion date church dogma that is so hopelessly incoherent that even a small child can see that simple addition must be abandoned in favor of man's tradition when it comes to the date of the crucifixion of Messiah. Well, I can hear the objections now, as I have heard them many times in the past. It goes like this. Well, isn't it good enough we believe Yeshua Jesus died on the cross of Calvary? Do I really want to spend time figuring out it was 28 AD or 33 AD, since my salvation does not depend upon it? Why should I spend precious time identifying the date of something that happened almost 2,000 years ago? And isn't it true that even Bible scholars cannot agree on the date Yeshua died? And if the experts can't agree upon the date, then I see no reason to spend my time trying to figure it out, whether it was 28 AD or 33 AD or some other date in between. And there you have it. Six years that begin with 28 AD and end with 33 AD that have been argued more about than almost any other facet of the ministry of Yeshua. Six years of mystery that hardly anyone thinks is important to investigate. Let sleeping dogs lie, they say. We have gone full circle, and now it is my job to begin answering all the objections, starting with the most common one. What difference does it make? The answer is all the difference in the world. Well, why? Because the crucifixion of Yeshua is the center point of all time duration prophecy in the Bible. If you know the crucifixion date, you now know and can identify the most important dates on God's prophetic 7,000-year sabbatical calendar. So, you mean to say that the crucifixion date of Yeshua is the key to unlocking not only the time durations, but the actual dates that future prophecy and past prophecy have both been and will be fulfilled at an exact appointed time? Yes. The answer is yes. Without the correct crucifixion date, you can only guess as to where you are on God's timeline, and if that doesn't matter, it should. Why should it matter to me? The most urgent reason is that we are on the cusp of one of the most important dispensational changes to ever take place on God's 7,000-year sabbatical calendar. You are living in the period of time that will see the end of the church age that concludes with the mystery departure of those who are in Christ, a departure from this earth. Yes, this event is revealed in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 53, where it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Did you know that the Lord wants you to eagerly look for His coming? Did you know that He promises rewards for those that are awaiting His return? 
to collect those that belong to him in the clouds. The question is, are you ready? And will you be rewarded at his coming? Yes, you heard that right. The Lord promises a reward for those that are looking for his coming. Let's see if we can discover just some of the promised rewards that are revealed in over 100 Bible passages on the topic. We will look at a sampling of nine of these promises as found in the Bible asking the question, What are the rewards and why should I care? This is being read from the ESV English Bible. In Hebrews 9.28, So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly awaiting for him. 1 Peter 5.4, And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. In 1 John 2, verse 28, And now, little children, abide in him, so that when he appears we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. In Philippians 3.20, But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 John 3, verses 2 through 3, Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In 1 Thessalonians 1.10 And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. And in Luke 21, verse 28, now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing nigh. And 2 Timothy 4, 8, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. You might want to come back and read these verses from time to time as we all need to be reminded that with his coming comes our salvation and a new glorified body. When he comes, it will be to take us to our new heavenly home. Those that are eagerly looking for his coming will receive an unfading crown of glory. When he comes, our citizenship in heaven is confirmed. And most glorious of all is that we will be changed to be like the very one who has saved us. His coming will deliver us from the wrath that is to come upon the earth. His coming triggers a redemption that is sealed in heaven and becomes realized in real time. And finally, at His coming, those that are eagerly awaiting are promised a crown of righteousness. Oh yes, God does want you to know where you are on His calendar. Otherwise, He would not have revealed His sabbatical calendar to us in the first place or spend so much time giving us hundreds of clues in His Word in order that we might know where we are on God's 7,000-year sabbatical calendar. One of those major clues that the Lord wants us to know about is revealed in the first six letters of the first word in the Bible. It is there that, according to Isaiah 46, we can expect to find the Lord's first time duration calendar, revealed just as he promised it would be. Listen to what it says in Isaiah 46, 9-10. Remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. The first revelation, based on time duration, is discovered in the fifth and sixth pictographs, and the number Yod, or ten, that is also the pictograph of the mighty hand doing a divine work, when paired with the number Tav, or four hundred, 
that is pictured as a wooden cross or as the sign of cross sticks that reveals the mystery of the time duration between sin and the remedy for sin. In the past, starting with the year 2015, I have published that the sin date of 3971 was the start date for the 7,000-year calendar for mankind. In the year 2019-2020, I began to look more carefully at that presupposition in light of the sabbatical cycle, and I abandoned that teaching and replaced it with what I believe is the true start date for the 7,000-year calendar, and the only one in harmony with the sabbatical cycles that began with creation and started the 7,000-year countdown to eternity in the year following the sin of Adam, that year being 3970, the year after. 3971 BC. So to be clear, I have been publishing the 3970 BC date for over three years and have in that time only become absolutely more convinced that it is a correct start date for the 7,000 year calendar, but that does not change the fact that there is exactly 4,000 years between the sin and the cross. All this will be clarified in the light of Revelation as we move through this video teaching on the 7,000-year sabbatical prophetic calendar. Of course, the obvious question is from which event do we begin the 4,000-year calculation, from the cross event or from the sin event? Well, whichever event you choose, aren't you left in the dark as you are not certain of either the start date or the end date for this prophecy? Well, you're partially right. The answer is that we actually have both the start date for sin and the cross date confirmed by two indisputable scriptural sources. The cross event is confirmed in Ezekiel chapter 4, and it's also confirmed by the New Testament chronology of the events as recorded in the Gospels. Both these primary source proofs will be thoroughly investigated and proven in future 2024 videos. In fact, the videos that follow this video will begin dealing with this question and their attending dates, and we will do so in earnest. For now, we are going to assign the dates we already know from our research of the scriptures is correct, and then we will share those proofs in future 2024 videos. The duration of time based on the Bereshit Passover prophecy from the sin event to the cross event is exactly 4,000 years. The crucifixion of Christ was God's gracious response to the sin of Adam. The sin of Adam took place in 3971 B.C. The cross of Yeshua took place in 30 A.D. As a former student and teacher of forensic debate, I understand the fallacy of circular reasoning. And I expect that some will assume that I am guilty of just this fallacy. While that may appear to be correct, actually it is not the case, as we will prove each date independent of each other by biblical sources that confirm both are dates without anchoring our proof in either of the dates. In other words, careful and studious attention to this video will prove that we are not guilty of circular reasoning only guilty of providing unproven dates ahead of time in order that the video proceed in an orderly fashion that does not cause a lot of confusion. When we disclose that information in upcoming videos, we will be careful to make a notation that this is the proof of the crucifixion date of 30 AD or of the sin of Adam in 3971 or any other date we are pre-posting before the evidence for that date is actually revealed in this video. So we end this section with the following statement. The Lord has pinpointed the duration of time, exactly 4,000 years of time, between the sin and the cross event. And he did it in the very first six-letter Hebrew word in the Bible. You can discover this duration of timeline in the first Hebrew word in the Bible. Notice I said Hebrew. Yes, God communicated 80% of this in the Old Testament Hebrew language, revealed to a special group of people. Now, you probably think I'm talking about the Jews. So, who are those people? The answer is found in Amos 3, 7. He revealed his secret and does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets, including the prophet Moses. This information was revealed in what we call the Proto-Canaanite Hebrew, the language of the Garden of Eden. That is three languages, including a phonetic number and picture language. 
The first word in the Bible is so clearly prophetic that I have titled it the Bereshit Passover Prophecy, which you can discover for yourself by simply looking at the six pictures and numbers contained in the Hebrew Scripture. And of course, I will expand on this teaching in future 2024 videos. Does this teaching about the date of the crucifixion of Messiah come with some presuppositions, things you must believe in order to both see and understand the truths the Lord is revealing? Well, the answer is yes. What are they? Well, you must believe that seven, 24-hour days that make up the seven-day weekly cycle instituted by God for man is a shadow type of God's seven 1,000-year days that make up God's seven-day, a day for a thousand-year sabbatical calendar a calendar that is exactly 7,000 years long. This is revealed in Second Peter 3, 8. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. What you are wondering, does this have to do with the date on the Roman calendar that Jesus died on the cross? The answer to this question is broad and far-reaching. The crucifixion of the Son of God is obviously not something that the vast majority of men and women, both past and present, numbering in the billions, have taken very seriously, if they have thoughtfully considered it at all. I am certain of this, and I am also certain that from our Creator's point of view, this event is the centerpiece of all history, and the dating of this event is the key to unlocking the Lord's prophetic 7,000-year calendar. It happened on the Lord's fourth day, a day that ends after exactly 4,000 years on His day for a 1,000-year calendar. Does the fourth day end in the year 30 A.D. coincidental to the cross event? The answer is no. Pattern is prophecy, and this is a great place to share an amazing prophetic pattern that we should not miss. Here we have two prophetic patterns that intersect to create an astounding confirmation that we are in sync with the Lord's prophetic calendar. Notice that the life of Yeshua both forecasts and completes to the very day the creation of Adam to the day Adam sinned. We will go into this in detail in an upcoming 2024 prophecy video, but for now notice that when we pattern the days of the life of the first Adam with the life of the last Adam, Yeshua HaMashiach, we discover something that is simply amazing and cannot be a coincidence. The life of Yeshua going back 12,235 days, which is 33 and a half years, based on a 365.25 day calendar, puts the birth of Jesus on Tishri 6 in 5 BC. Tishri 6 is also the day that Adam was created. Adam sinned on Elul 29, 39, 71 BC. If we go back 12,235 days on a 360-day tropical year calendar from a little 29, that is exactly 4,000 years from the cross event, we land on Tishri 6 on the Hebrew calendar and 4,005 B.C. on the Roman calendar. Adam sinned in 3971 B.C., and the following year would be the completion of the fifth week or five weeks of years that add up to 35 years. 7 times 5 equals 35. That puts us at 3970 B.C., the start date for the sixth weekly sabbatical cycle from creation and the first sabbatical cycle that is one year after the 3971 sin event. So going forward 4,000 years from 3970 B.C., we do not land on the 30 A.D. cross event, but we do land on the final year of the fourth day that is 1,000 years long on the Lord's prophetic 7,000-year sabbatical calendar. In other words, one year after the first Adam fulfills the fifth week of year cycle on the Jubilee calendar that the Lord gave man, going forward exactly 4,000 years, lands on the year after the 30 A.D. cross event, and exactly one year later, as patterned by the first Adam, we land on 31 A.D., fulfilling the final 4,000th year on the Lord's prophetic sabbatical calendar. And that is amazing. The final 2,000 years that ends the 70th week of Daniel is now forecast to happen in the fall of 2031 A.D., which means that we have yet another prophetic numeric harbinger that is forecasting the time of Jacob's trouble to add to the half a dozen more that we have and we'll be exploring in our 2024 
prophetic prophecy videos and DVDs. It sure looks like the 70th week of Daniel and the great and terrible day of the Lord is going to begin in the fall of 2024. The following 16-minute video is the distillation of literally thousands of hours of study and presented as a condensed, very condensed, 7,000-year calendar in a very small nutshell. This video will be followed by dozens of 2024 prophetic videos that will fill in the blanks. The following is a glimpse, a quick overview that is a framework for just a few of the dozens of prophetic proofs based on God's Word that we will be unfolding in the next couple of months, all pointing to the same dates. I hope you are blessed as you watch the Lord's 7,000-year sabbatical calendar in a nutshell. Exploring the Lord's 7,000-year sabbatical calendar Connecting the prophecy dots in the Bible is like opening a thousand-piece puzzle box, dumping all the pieces on the table, and working tirelessly to assemble them. Well, actually, prophetic puzzles can be much more difficult, in fact, impossible without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and a bold faith that believes God and understands that God is never wrong, and that His Word is 100% trustworthy. We all struggle with our own spiritual blindness. God has no such problem, and He is kind and gracious to those who are seeking Him with all their hearts, in order to know Him better, in order to understand Him more fully, and the only way that happens is with His help. So I pray for His help as I do my best to share with you where we are on God's prophetic calendar. There are literally hundreds of prophetic puzzle pieces in the Bible, but just like the box that contains all the puzzle pieces, the frame around the puzzle needs to be connected before the puzzle picture can come into focus. The short prophetic puzzle pieces in this nutshell epilogue will be put at the end of all my future videos in order to reveal the 10 biblical proofs that I am depending upon as the foundation for teaching what the scripture reveals about the Lord's prophetic sabbatical 7,000 year calendar, the oldest biblical prophecy perspective in the entire world. To accomplish this in 15 minutes means I am only presenting a very brief and abbreviated summary of a corpus of my own published and unpublished videos and articles produced in the past 10 years that are hundreds of hours long, distilled and condensed to a brief overview in the hope that this will give you the confidence to explore in much greater depth the prophetic vistas published in this and upcoming videos. So this will not answer all your questions, but it will answer the question, how do I know the dates I'm disclosing are correct? After all, a 7,000-year prophetic calendar with an incorrect and unreliable start date, well, it may get close to the mark, and 100 years ago would have been interesting, a novelty. 50 years ago, it would have been very interesting, and 10 years ago, it would have been exciting. But producing such a calendar months before it is announcing the departure of the church? Well, you better know what you're talking about, and your sources better be impeccable. So yes, I am not unaware of the risks of producing something that ends up being wrong. I'm more aware of the risk of sitting on my hands when there is urgent need for saints and sinners to know where we are on God's prophetic time clock. I am confident that what I am sharing is correct. The question remains, who am I listening to? What are my sources? How in the world can I know that the dates I am depending upon to come to my conclusions are correct? Let's begin with the question I get most often that is also the key date that unlocks most of the other prophetic dates on God's 7,000-year calendar. So question one, how do I know that Yeshua died on the cross on Nisan 14, April 5th in 30 AD on the Roman calendar? Obviously, there are many proofs of this historically recognized date. But how do I know that 30 AD is the crucifixion date of Yeshua? Now, at this point, I could spend an hour explaining all this and hardly scratch the surface. And it would be worth watching. But please remember, this is a Bible prophecy summary in a very small nutshell. So let's begin. The answer is found in Ezekiel 4, verses 6 and 7. You might want to go and read the entire chapter. Listen to what the Lord told Ezekiel. And when thou hast accomplished them, 
lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Therefore thou shalt set thy face toward the siege of Jerusalem, and thine arm shall be uncovered, and thou shalt prophesy against it. The time of iniquity prophesied by Ezekiel was forty years to be followed by a siege of Jerusalem. The siege of Jerusalem, prophetically in view, happened exactly forty years after the crucifixion of Yeshua that took place in 30 A.D. In other words, the 70 A.D. siege of Jerusalem minus forty years lands you or takes you back to the year 30 A.D. just as God said it would through his prophet Ezekiel. The iniquity of Judah was the worst crime ever committed on earth as it was the crucifixion of the Son of God. So the answer to the question, how do I know Jesus was crucified on Nisan 14, April 5th, 30 A.D.? Well, the Bible tells me so. Question 2, how do I know Adam sinned in the year 3971? In Genesis 1.1, this question is answered in the first Hebrew word in the Bible. I call this the Bereshit Passover prophecy that reveals the first evangelium, the gospel story and pictures, and then based on the Hebrew script that is also Numbers, reveals the time duration in Numbers in the first word in the Bible, just like Isaiah prophesied in chapter 46, 9 and 10. Listen to what the prophet says. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. A word directly from God, spoken through the prophet Isaiah. The numeric time duration revelation is discovered in the word beginning, that is the last five letters in the six-letter word Bereshit, and it fulfills this prophecy. Ta 400 times Yod 10, God's multiplier, 10 being ordinal perfection, equals 4,000. 4,000 years takes us to the cross event. The cross event happened in 30 AD, so we go back in time, 4,000 years, and it reveals the year that the first Adam sinned in 3971. So, answer number two, how do I know Adam sinned on Elul 29 in 3971 BC? The Bible tells me so. Question three, how do I know that Yeshua was born in 5 BC? Well, this mystery is solved when you understand that the last Adam was patterning his life, death, and resurrection, that's Yeshua HaMashiach, in order to undo or reverse the curse of the first Adam that sinned. Since Adam was created on the sixth day of creation, on Tishri 6, and we know he sinned in the year 3971 BC, let's do the math. The life of Yeshua was about 30 years old when he began his three-and-a-half-year ministry that began in the fall and ended with his resurrection on Nisan 17, three days after his Wednesday crucifixion on Nisan 14. April 5th, 30 A.D. is when Jesus died on the cross. Thirty-three-and-a-half years times 365.25 equals 12,235 days. That's the number of days between the birth of Yeshua and his resurrection on April 8, 30 A.D. If we go back 33 and a half years, 12,235 days from the resurrection of Yeshua starting the day count on the Sabbath of Nisan, 17, we land on Tishri 6 in the year 5 B.C. On the Roman calendar, this is October 8, 5 B.C. Yeshua was born right in the middle of the period of time between the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement. Isn't that interesting? But what is more interesting is that it is exactly the same month and year that Adam was created on the sixth day of the creation week. Pattern is prophecy. So answer number three, how do I know Yeshua was born in the fall of 5 BC? The Bible tells me so. Question four, how do I know the year of creation on the Roman calendar is 4005 BC? Well, the Tishri 6 birth of Yeshua matches perfectly the Tishri 6 creation of the first Adam. Tishri 6 in 5 BC on the Roman calendar in October 8th was when Jesus was born. Discovering the creation date can be calculated now that we know when Yeshua was born in 5 BC and when we know the duration of time and days between Yeshua's birth and his resurrection. We can now calculate when the first Adam was created and that year also give us the creation date as Adam was created on the sixth day of the first creation week. 
If we start from Elul 29, the day and month that ends the sabbatical year that the first Adam sinned in 3971, and go backwards in time, 12,235 days, we will discover the day and year that the first Adam was created. 3971 BC, going back 12,235 days on the 360 day for a year calendar that God established in the beginning, takes you to the 6th of Tishri in the creation week of 4005 BC. So the answer to number four is how do I know the creation date was Tishri 1, 4005 BC? The Bible tells me so. Question five How do I know? when the 7,000-year countdown for mankind ends. If we go back to the Bereshit Passover prophecy, we find the answer. The numeric time duration revelation is discovered in the first word in the Bible, the word beginning, that is the last five letters in the six-letter word Bereshit. Ta 400 times Yod 10 equals 4,000. From sin to the crucifixion of Yeshua that happened in 30 AD on the Roman calendar. The Yod 10 times Sheen, 300, plus 1 equals 3,001 years. Going forward 3,001 years from the cross event of 30 AD takes us to the very important future date on the Roman calendar of 3031 AD. The 7,000 year countdown on God's sabbatical calendar also takes us to the end of the millennial reign of Christ, who returns back to his home in heaven at the end of his 1,000 year reign that ends in 3031 AD. So answer 5. The 7,000 year countdown for mankind ends in 3031 AD. And this is also the time that concludes the 1,000 year reign of Yeshua on the earth. How do I know this? The Bible tells me so. If the 7,000-year countdown ends in the year 3031, then we now have a very important milestone by which we can authoritatively answer a couple more questions. So question number six, when is the second coming of Christ? The answer is 3031 AD, going back in time exactly 1,000 years, lands us on the year 2031 AD. This is the year of the second coming of Christ that begins the millennial reign of Yeshua. Answer 6. How do I know the second coming of Christ and the start date for the millennium is 2031 AD? The answer is the Bible tells me so. Question 7. Knowing that 2031 is the end of the 70th week of Daniel, we can go back in time exactly seven years and discover the very year that the 70th week of Daniel begins. So answer seven. The 70th week of Daniel begins in the year 2024 A.D. 2024 A.D. is the year that the 70th week of Daniel begins, ending seven years later on the Day of Atonement on a Jubilee year that ends with the second coming of Yeshua in 2031 A.D. to reign in Jerusalem with a rod of iron for exactly 1,000 years. And so the time of Jacob's trouble ends in 2031 A.D. Question number eight. When does the 6,000 years God appointed for man to work come to an end? Going backwards in time, 3,000 years from the conclusion of the 7,000-year sabbatical calendar gives us the date for the beginning of the fifth day on God's 1,000-year-for-a-day calendar, confirming that it begins the year after the crucifixion of Yeshua in 30 A.D. It begins in 31 A.D. To be clear, the fifth day begins in 31 A.D. and ends in 1031 A.D., and the sixth day begins in 1031 A.D. and ends in 2031 A.D. on the Roman calendar. And finally, the seventh day begins in 2031, and on the Roman calendar it ends in 3031 A.D. So the answer to question 8, the sixth day that the Lord prophesied would be the six thousandth and final year for man to work begins in 1031 A.D. and ends in 2031 A.D. on the Roman calendar. Question number nine. And when did the prophetic 7,000 year sabbatical calendar begin? So going back 7,000 years from 3031 A.D. lands us on the year 3970 B.C., the year after the sin of Adam, the first Adam that sinned in 3971 B.C. 
So check your own date duration calendar and you will discover that the number of years between 3970 BC and 3031 AD is exactly 7,000 years. I know it looks like it's 7,001, but it's not. This is correct. Remember, we have a problem every time we go between BC and AD as we have to make a correction. And keep in mind the second proof of this date based on the fact that pattern is prophecy and so when you go forward 35 years from the creation date of 4005, we land on the end of the fifth and the beginning of the sixth sabbatical cycle, the sixth sabbatical year that begins in the year 3970 after completing five sabbatical years after creation date of 4005 B.C. So answer number nine, the 7,000 year sabbatical prophetic calendar began the countdown to eternity in the year 3970 BC. It is interesting that the first sabbatical week of years was interrupted by the sin event that took place in 3971, exactly 34 years from creation to sin. And when does sinful man need a savior? The answer is after the sin of Adam in 3971 that corrupted all mankind and left us without hope until we were rescued by the grace of God based on the finished work of Yeshua as he paid the penalty for our sins on a wooden cross 1994 years ago in the year 30 AD. Does 34 years complete the fifth sabbatical year from creation? The answer is no. But 35 does, as 35 is divisible by 7 with no remainder, further confirming the start date of the Lord's sabbatical 7,000-year calendar from mankind in 3970 B.C. And finally, question number 10. How do I know when Yeshua is coming back to take us home? The answer is, I don't. But I do know this. It's soon. Very soon.